John, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Adam, thanks for having me on. Good to talk to you again. Great. Well, John, look, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. Uh, you're a highly requested guest by the audience here, but you're also a good friend. We have lots of great discussions, uh, you know, on our own off channel. Um, but it's always fun to have you back on and dive into things. And this one's going to be really fun because uh, we had you on this channel, gosh, I don't know, almost a year ago when we were talking about um, uh, people's uh, experts, uh, brown M&Ms. And that's a reference back to uh, the old rider and the Van Halen contract, you know, when they would show up at a venue, they demanded that there be a bowl with all the brown M&Ms removed. And everybody thought that they were big prima donnas, but it was genius because they had such a complicated technological show with pyrotechnics where people could get injured. Uh, they wanted to make sure that the venue that they were showing up at, that the people there had read the contract really closely. And so they could just look at that bowl. And if they saw brown M&Ms in it, they would say, hey, these guys didn't set the venue up well. We have to check everything. So um, back when we uh, when I asked you, what are some of your brown M&Ms, you told us what your indicator is, which I'm going to keep, keep, keep people in suspense about for just another minute, um, because before we get to it, I do just want to start with a question I normally ask all my guests at the beginning, which is, what's your current assessment of the global economy and financial markets? Well, the the world in general is a horrendous mess right now. We've been making terrible mistakes since the, at least the 1970s. And there are those who would say that the uh, the mistakes go back to 1913 with the formation of the Fed. But basically, we've been in recent years borrowing way too much money and encouraging basically everybody else to leverage in one way or another. So you got massively um, indebted governments and then corporations and then individuals all with too much debt right now and that always leads to trouble whether it's you know whether you're an individual or a corporation or a government um when you borrow too much your life spins out of control and we are really for the first time in human history um in that situation globally now you, it used to be that one country or another would uh, would make some big mistakes, blow up their currency, have a gigantic crisis, whatever. Uh, but that would be in the context of a sound money world where everybody else was back uh, was on the gold standard, and therefore basically okay financially. Uh, but now everybody has a, a fiat currency printing press, and they're all abusing that privilege. Um, so when the consequences come home, and you can make the argument that they already are. You know, we've got inflation, yada yada going on right now that uh, that will lead to a lot of trouble. But when when the serious problems hit from all of this, um, it'll be the first time that it's global in scale and in scope. And and so that's going to make it very different and hard to predict. But um, I, I think you can say with certainty that right now the global financial system is in very bad shape and headed for worse shape. OK. Um... That's a, a big statement. Uh, I'm sure people want me to dig into it with you, and I'm going to. Um, first, though, I want to go over to your early warning indicator, your your canary in the coal mine that I referenced in the introduction. Um, that indicator that you have shared with us in the past that you've watched closely to try to get a sense for when we were going to tip from you know what's been sort of a an era of of relative prosperity um, coming out of the global financial crisis where Tons of stimulus was being pumped into the system. Asset prices pretty much went straight up for the better part of more than a decade. Um, people have been feeling increasingly flush. And one of the things that a lot of people did when they felt flush was go out and buy RVs. And uh, the pandemic, when it sort of shut the world down, you know, offices were closed and people were being sent checks in the mail and whatnot. Uh, boy, RV sales kind of went through the roof as everybody wanted to try to, you know, have a COVID safe way to, 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 to get out of home. Uh, and also they had that extra cash sort of sloshing around. Um, so I know you've been watching that indicator closely to see that, you know, it, 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 is that strong buying demand going to, to peak and maybe start coming down? And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the reasons kind of why you watch this is in past uh, economic cycles, yeah, when people feel good, they go out and they buy big toys like this. And then when uh, we enter the bus cycle, uh, obviously the demand dries up and then you can pick these things up, you know, at the, the bottom of a cycle for a song. So what are the indicators telling you right now in the RV space about where we're headed economically? 
Well, they're rolling over again. And, and you know, I, sh I should say that um, I've spent the last 30 or so years living more or less in suburbs where, um, where the RV ends up being the biggest toy that people buy at the peak of the cycle. You know, when I've got a boat, they've got motorcycles and jet skis and, and a big house, all that stuff. Um, and they still have extra money or at least still have extra credit. They go out and they buy a, a house that you can drive from place to place, which is a you know, patently absurd idea just on the surface. But um, but it is a good cyclical indicator because um, because it's usually the last thing people buy. Um, RV sales boom towards the end of credit expansions and then collapse on the other side of it, you know, and, and so. so the lesson from that is twofold, really. The, you know, it's a sign of what's happening with the economy, and it's also a sign of when you should be buying an RV. <laughs> Do not buy one at the peak when the prices are going up. Uh, but in the uh, the depths of a recession, people have to give their big toys away just about because they they run out of credit. And they can't cover their uh, car loan and their motorcycle loan and their jet skis and all that. That's when you buy these things. So this would be a time when you probably still don't want to be buying an RV because we're still at, uh, at kind of elevated price levels, but they're starting to roll over um, along with, I would argue, the rest of the economy. You know, we're, we're headed into a recession, it seems. Uh, and a lot of other indicators point in that direction, but the RV indicator definitely does. You, you told me that you saw a, um, an ad for an RV that was thirty dollars or $40,000 below MSRP. Uh, that's the kind of thing you see just as the, the cycle turns and uh, sales dry up and prices start to get cut. So if we're seeing that now, then you can add the RV indicator to all the other indicators that say we're heading into a recession. Yeah, uh, it's funny. You, you, you're, you're right. I, I had a, a, a friend um, who's sort of been monitoring RV prices, basically largely based upon uh, your earlier uh video on this channel from, like I said, about eight months ago or so, where you were talking about this indicator. Um, so he, he contacts the local dealership and just sort of, you know, every so often asks them, hey, where are prices right now? Well, now the dealership actually reached out to him and said, hey, we know you've been calling from time to time. We have a floor model here um, that, you know, we're, we're pricing for a song right now. So if, you, if you're interested, come on in. Um, and he said, no, that's OK. I, I think the RV market's actually got a little further to fall, so I'm going to wait. But just curious, what, what's the price uh, of, of the model you're talking about? The guy said it's uh, MSRP of one hundred and thirty three thousand uh, and they're going to offer it to my friend for the low, low price of eighty nine nine ninety nine. Um, so that's already a pretty substantial discount there. What I'm doing the math in my head, but it's it's getting close to like a 35, 40 percent haircut that they're putting on MSRP right now. Um, and again, this knife may still be falling, so it may, it may still have a lot further to fall from here.